Welcome again. Um, this is a collaboration. This Brain Health Tuesday is a collaboration between AARP Massachusetts and the Alzheimer's Association. Uh, and we're here to provide tips on how to incorporate the association's new 10 healthy habits for brain health into your everyday life. I'm with AARP and uh, we're welcoming people from around the country. So yes, feel free to put in chat where you're tuning in from. Um, as you know, AARP maintains a deep focus on the health, financial security, and personal fulfillment of people 50 and over and their families. And you'll find that reflected in our offerings and resources, and of course, in our advocacy. Uh, we just wrapped up a month long series for caregivers in May, and our six pillars of brain health was one of the topics we addressed. Uh, and you can find that recording and all of the past AARP Massachusetts recordings on the AARP Massachusetts YouTube page. So um, please go ahead and find that and maybe become a subscriber so you don't miss a thing with us uh, to keep up with all that we're working on and offering. Uh, you can also go to aarp.org slash local. That will take you to AARP wherever you are in the country. That's aarp.org slash local. Um, and also to tie in with today's uh, program, uh, check out the AARP Brain Health Resource Center at aarp.org slash brain health. All right, so we're going to get started. And uh, I know it's noon, which my my body associates, uh, at noon in, in Massachusetts anyway, there's people from all over the country, but I'm ready for lunch. And so this is going to really seal the deal for me. Um, so for today's topic, healthy cooking on a budget with Alison Dvorak, a registered dietitian. Allison is the executive director for Senior Resources, which is the Agency on Aging of Eastern Connecticut, and it covers 56 towns and two tribal nations. She's a registered dietitian and certified nutritionist with undergraduate degrees in psychology and dietetics, and a master of science in nutrition science from Syracuse University. And she has worked in many environments, including Walt Disney World, um, corrections facilities, well, that was quite a gamut there. Um, <laughs> hospitals, long-term care, and event facility management. So we're excited, Allison. Over to you, and let's get our palettes uh, ready for an interesting conversation. Great. Thank you so much for having me, and thank you all for joining us today. Um, it is lunchtime, and I'm, I'm glad you're here in my kitchen to, to make some items that would make a great lunch um, for you and your loved ones. To talk about healthy eating on a budget, we're going to go through a lot of strategies and ideas that you'll find in a grocery store anywhere near you. But I wanted to focus a little bit on the mind health that comes into this as well. And when we think about keeping our brains healthy, the key component to that is keeping our hearts healthy. So a lot of focus is on the traditional Mediterranean diet, um, very plant forward as far as making sure you get some vegetables in, in every meal um, and using some healthy fats to make sure that we feel full and happy and, and you know, not like we're depriving ourselves of anything to get us through to other meals. So the dish I'm going to, one of the dishes I'm going to show you today incorporates a lot of that philosophy and highlights some items that we don't always think about when we think about healthy food. A lot of times people really get focused on you know, fresh grown out of the garden kind of food, and that is healthy, and there's nothing, uh, nothing wrong with that. Um, but there are sometimes ways to incorporate other foods. So the recipe I made today that's going to be shared with you all, it's called a Greek style um, vegetable salad. And I'm going to toss this up in a little bit, but so that you can see what the different ingredients were, I, I kept it separate. One of the key things here is that the pasta form that I used in this salad is a whole wheat orzo pasta. So it kind of looks a little bit like a rice there. But by switching from a, a uh, not whole, whole wheat or, you know, our traditional pastas and switching over to a whole wheat pasta, it's really the same price point, but the whole wheat pasta actually provides a lot more nutrients, the B vitamins, the fiber and everything else. So you're really getting a lot more nutrition in every bite and for every buck that you're spending on in your grocery uh, cart. The other items in here are some items that we traditionally think, you know, we're probably going to buy that in a jar or a can, which include uh, artichoke hearts. You, you could 
do your own artichokes. But I think when people think about like a, a, a canned artichoke art is here and olives, Kalamata olives that are sliced in half and also roasted red peppers are a, a great jarred item that you can keep on hand um, in your home. And then I also put in here chickpeas, which typically come in a can for most of our, our grocery shopping. But no surprise here, the cucumber is fresh. Those don't freeze very well. And the tomatoes are also fresh cherry tomatoes that are fresh, a little bit of purple onion. And the surprise factor of the day is diced frozen avocado. So when I've told people about that, they're like, what, avocado doesn't come frozen. So yes, it does. You can buy it uh, at the grocery store in the freezer section. And um, I don't know about you, whenever I select an avocado, I'm not sure if it's ripe or not, or if I'm, if I'm gonna get the good deal and buy six, I don't know if I'm gonna get through all of them at the same time. So here I'll show you, this is just, it's cubed up avocado and it defrosts, you pull out just what you want and put it into your dish. So it's really important to think, not forget about those canned items and frozen items. There's so many ways that you can use other frozen vegetables like frozen cut green beans in a tuna niçoise type salad or frozen defrosted peas are fantastic to put in a salad, frozen defrosted corn. So these are things that you can keep in your freezer and just pull out what you want so that you're not dealing with anything going to waste. Because if we bought something and we didn't eat it, well then that really was not very helpful for our, but our food budget. So great ways to do that. I'm going to finish this recipe by making a little salad dressing here. This is just olive oil, lemon juice, um, red wine vinegar, dried oregano, dried basil, and a little bit of minced garlic. So very simple things, again, to keep around the house, not very complicated. If you have fresh in your garden, you could certainly use it. Um, to that, I just poured it all over the salad, and I'm going to just gently fold all these ingredients together. It's hard to do this while I'm holding it up in the air, but uh, so I'm actually going to put it down so I don't drop the glass bowl, but you're just folding the ingredients together so that they can marinate and uh, get that flavoring all over the whole whole wheat orzo pasta as well. And then when you put that together, you can top it with a lot of other types of Greek styled items like feta cheese. Everything's better with feta or so that's how it looks all tossed together. Fantastic. Could be, just leave it like this. And that's a, a, a vegan a vegetable salad, but you could also top it with walnuts or pepita seeds or sliced diced chicken or feta cheese and mix it all together. One thing I wanted to note about when you make something like this is a great Greek salad or any kind of large version salad. That's wonderful for you to take to a party or, you know, another gathering or have it for a, a family style meal. But it's even nicer if you think, well, how can I make that for somebody to take it to their home? I have a lot of people that ask me about how can I help my parents or how can I help my neighbor who's an older adult who who needs um, maybe a little better idea of what they're eating in the fridge and making something like this and then packing it into a small container that you can offer to them like this, or you know, if somebody's over to your house and, and you wanna give them something to take home with them, just put a little label on it. This says Greek vegetable orzo salad, the date I made it, and then put it in a little container for them to take. So when you open up the refrigerator, you might see tons of great fresh, fresh produce all over the place, right? But all of that requires a little bit of work. So we kind of, you know, think like any teenagers we might know, they open their fridge and they say there's nothing to eat. Well, there's plenty to eat in there, but it all takes a little bit of effort. So for a lot of older adults, if we want them to eat healthier, or even those teenagers, if we want them to eat healthier, um, we want to have them open up the fridge and say, "Ooh, that looks good. I'll just grab that. Because then that's just a lunch that's ready to go for them. And you could, if you're, I, I love this. I even do this for packing for lunch for the, for the work week. You can mix this up on a Sunday and package it into individual containers and then have it available to, you know, take each day to work ready to go. Don't worry about it in the morning. Um, and it's a delicious all put together. You know, you'll be the star of the lunchroom uh, ideas. So I feel like those are, those are really important concepts when we think about grocery shopping for our older adult friends, having things that are in more of a ready to eat mode, but still wholesome 
um, foods and also that packaging of things where they could be frozen or they could be canned so that they can just pull out a little bit at a time or even you know packing things into the smaller snack bags so that we're not wasting food over the course of time. Um, I hope questions are coming in, so please feel free to, you know, to throw those into the chat so we can get them as get to them as we go along. The other thing about about that healthy eating for your heart and for your brain is really about keeping it simple. So keeping to wholesome foods, you know, like the whole grains, like the vegetables, a little bit of meat, a little bit of eggs and cheese. Those are all OK, but really the studies show that the, the best effect of the Mediterranean diet or even the MIND diet, which is a combination of, of blood pressure control and heart control, heart health, is focusing on those antioxidants, which really come to us through fruits and vegetables. So any way we can up our intake of fruits and vegetables is really great and decrease our unhealthy fats is very important. So balance things out with the other meat items that you might add to things. Nothing wrong with meat, but trying to keep it a smaller amount of the plate because there's so much already taken up by those whole foods of the fruits and vegetables and the whole grains. Another idea I was going to throw on here, just because I don't know where everybody's coming from as far as why you'd want to be healthy eating on a budget, except for that's everybody in the world because we all want to be healthy and we all want to save money. Um, it's really sometimes about putting in a little bit of making it from home. Um, and to that, I think, well, what, what, think about what you like to order when you go out to a restaurant and then conceptualize how can you make something like that at home that you're excited about to take to, uh, take to work or, or to have it, uh, to eat at home or to share with others and, and other friends. I tend to order salads a lot when I go out to restaurants and I love a salad that's different, that has, you know, interesting things and combination of things in it. It's got cranberries and apples and, um, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, different kind of cheese that I might not always carry at home. So why can't you do that at home? You can almost set up your own mini salad bar again to set things up. What I made here is what I love is a, uh, a mason jar salad. I love this idea. I actually uh, got it at a veterans. I got the idea at a veterans event, but um, you just put a little, you start at the bottom and put a little bit of salad dressing, whatever kind you'd like, and then start with your more firm vegetables. Like here, I put carrots, things that are going to hold up to sitting in salad dressing for a little bit and layer it up with anything else that you like as far as vegetable as things to go in a salad. <clears throat> I put in some chickpeas and the roasted red peppers because obviously I had some of those things out making this salad, some yellow tomatoes, some diced cucumbers, and then you fill it with the salad or mixed greens at the top. You take this into, uh, you put it in your refrigerator and it just looks like you've got your charming own farmer's market going on. Or you take it into your, um, I, I do this at my work refrigerator a lot and everybody opens up the door and goes, oh, isn't that, doesn't that look so pretty? Um, but when you're about ready to eat it, you just turn it upside down so that the salad dressing and um, will float down across all of those food items for a little bit. So after about 10 minutes, that starts to, to work its way down and get into everything. Then you open up the jar and you can put it onto a plate or you can eat it right out of the jar if you wanted to. Um, so it's a nice way to, to pack something so that you take that interesting salad with you on the go. And in there you could, uh, you, I wouldn't put nuts in there because it might get moist and soggy. So those you'd keep on a little side bag to add on top for your own toppings. So there's just so many ways that you can do the foods that you like or that you get excited about at a restaurant and just to have them where you can make them at home and take them to work with you to or to on the go. I also love the ideas here that are very important in keeping the sizes small. Now the recipe and most recipes are for four people or six people or eight people or 50 people. Um, and how do we scale that so that somebody who is one or two people in their household can still enjoy that recipe and make it? So there is some math you can do. You can always half or, or increase, uh, multiply a recipe. A lot of times people have multiplied a recipe, but then they don't really work on cutting a recipe in half. So when actually this recipe, um, when I made it, was actually twice what what it counted for. So the recipe I'm providing to you is a halved of this recipe anyway, because that easily divides into 
um, four servings like this if I wanted to make them and store them and have them for for lunch for myself for the week. Because when you do make something um, at home, you wanna make sure that you eat it within that week. Um, if you buy it from a restaurant, typically the recommendation is to consume it within three days just because it was made outside of your control. But from a food safety perspective, if you make something and it's under your control, didn't go out at a party or picnic on the table and just was made in your kitchen, you can keep it in your refrigerator for up to seven days. I call it use it or lose it within that um, last time frame. there. My family's very aware of that term. But um, with this, you're, again, making sure you eat all the foods so that you're not wasting money on by putting money into your trash can. So any way that you can look at how can I make this, package it, plan for what's going on in your life so that the foods that you're making and, and creating for yourself or for your family are going to get eaten ready to grab and go. A lot of times, um, you know, people with, with kids in school still or people running out on the go, they really want something that they can just, it's ready. It doesn't really necessarily take a whole lot more prep in the morning. And that's how you get best dollar for, for money. There's other strategies um, that I wanted to touch on, especially for older adults. Um, through the Older Americans Act, uh, there's support for the Senior Nutrition Program, which is Meals on Wheels, or congregate meals that are held at senior centers or churches or community centers, lots of different locations that would have a place for people to convene and eat. Uh, the Older Americans Act is focused on healthy aging for, for anybody of any income level. So the qualifying factor for that is to be 60 years of age or older. And um, these meals have to meet the dietary guidelines for Americans. And that means that they are low in sodium, they're well balanced for people with diabetes, they meet general healthy guidelines. Sometimes there's not a selective menu in these locations, but you have a big variety over the course of time. And the key thing is for people to get together, enjoy that socialization, because that's also a huge part of brain health is staying connected to others and eat a healthy meal and, and have some different programs and nutrition education. And similarly on the home delivered meals, it's really for people that are older adults that can't get out um, to that congregate location and have that same healthy meal that meets those same guidelines. So great uh, opportunity for that. It is done slightly in different states across the country. I participate in a lot of um, work groups on that. Sometimes it has to be a weekly delivery of meals. Sometimes it's cold, sometimes it's hot. The concept is carried out in different ways based on the geography that has to be covered, honestly, and it's always limited funding. But, um, but the program in and of itself is still providing a healthy meal and it is an option all across the country. Another way to extend somebody's food budget is to do what we call a benefits screening or a benefits checkup, which is a National Council on Aging to, has this free system that you can use. And it's, it's just web-based. It's not, you don't put in any identifying information into it, but you can see if you might qualify for some programs that support um, your finances, including SNAP, which is the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. And for older adults, they actually have much easier um, requirements for eligibility and they don't have to do the certification as often. So it's really important for older adults to consider this. It's the amount that you get each month depends on some of your other expenses and your income and everything else. So for people that are a low to moderate income, it really is worth looking at an application because some of their medical expenses, if they're paying for a little bit for a caregiver or other supports in their home, it offsets that SNAP application and they can really get significant dollars. It's not meant to meet 100% of anybody's grocery bill, but it, it does really help. And similar to that, uh, this time of year, we have a program through the Department of Agriculture in Connecticut, and I know it happens in several other states, that's called the Senior Farmer Market Nutrition Program. And this was developed by the Department of Agriculture really to support the local farmers, which is lovely. But um, what they do is they give a card 
and in some states, I'm sure they still do paper, but we've converted to cards here. Um, a card that's this year has $50 on it. And if they, they only get one per season, but that's $50 that that senior can then go use at a farmer's market to buy fruits and vegetables. And that money goes directly to the farmer. So that supports um, the local agriculture in the area. Plus it's a lot of fun. So hopefully you can connect or uh, see if that program exists in your region as well. It's really a great way to get people out and buy more foods. But I don't want to forget the idea that saving money anywhere in your life helps to increase your food budget, right? Because we have a lot of folks that qualify for a Medicare savings program or different, uh, you know, looking at their their medication expenses or their other health insurance costs or getting into um, subsidized housing of some sort. Those are all great ways to actually save a good bit of money for, for pe people that might be struggling with their budget and how they use that money is up to them based on where they really need to. But a lot of times it's in, uh, in the realm of food and you have a little bit more, need, more money to spend uh, towards, towards nutritious foods at that point in time. So lots of great ways to connect. Um, a lot of this happens through agencies on aging because we work with uh, older adults in all of those income um, arenas. So please reach out to your local area agency on aging for assistance with any of that. Um, let's see, what else did I wanna cover? I think as far as heart, uh, brain health, I know within the 10, uh, 10 items, it also includes not to, you know, it's not just one thing whenever we're talking about eating healthy, it's a lot of things. It's eating healthy and then exercising and staying hydrated and getting good sleep and protecting your head when you're out doing things, you know, that would need a helmet and not smoking and all of those things play together. We just do as much as we can wherever we can to, to make those um, all work together because not just one is gonna save us. And I wanted to also note that um, online grocery shopping is kind of interesting to think about when we talk about budget. Because a lot of times people think that, well, there's fee so many fees associated with um, shopping online, either through your direct grocery store, a lot of times they have them, you know, there's Peapod, the Instacart, the, all these, even Amazon, even Walmart, they have all these ways of grocery shopping. And yes, there can be fees to them. And, you know, yet there are, and sometimes you would tip the person who's working your, uh, your grocery order, but really look at how much is that compared to what you've spent in time and gas and, and energy in getting to that store. Um, I know for me, it's, I get the plan where I can have unlimited deliveries per month and uh, for that set fee. And that's definitely worth my travel time because I live a little distance from a grocery store. And when you're grocery shopping in that format, you're usually right in your own home and you can say, do I really need that item? Let me look in the cabinet. And you're really only getting what you need, except instead of that moment when you're in the grocery store and you're like, ah, I think I need it. Do I need it? Well, I better get it. And then you come home and you didn't need it or the impulse purchases that happen when you see something that's maybe not so healthy in the grocery store that's very tempting and um, you go towards that and maybe you didn't really wanna uh, have that be part of your plan anyway. So online grocery shopping is really a, a great tool for us to um, keep in mind if, it, if it's available in your area. You can do it successfully, you can get the deals and, and a lot of times you can still use coupons if you want to. And actually, I know in Connecticut and many other states, probably especially Massachusetts, SNAP, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, can also be used uh, in those formats. And that's relatively new to that arena. So I think I want to leave a second and see if we had any questions. Thanks, Allison. Are, you were thinking exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> we, yeah, have a, okay. we, have a few, we do have a few questions. And if anyone wants to add anything to the Q&A, um, please do so now because we're going to wrap up by 1230. Um, so uh, the first question we had was around uh, the, the avocados and whether you can freeze fresh avocados. And if so, how would you do it? So I'll have to, I'll have to say I have not done that myself yet, but I am going to. But the principle is the same for almost any vegetable that you would grow if you had too much of it. 
sometimes you might want to um, put out some parchment paper on a cookie sheet and then dice up the item and make sure that there's a little bit of space in between in between each of the items and then put them in your freezer for at least a half an hour maybe an hour would be better and then take it out and it should be frozen through the reason to space them out is so that they can be individually quick frozen that's mm. exactly what happens at you know all of the major places where they do frozen vegetables they get you have to give them a little space you can't just throw it all in a bag or you'll just get a frozen lump so <laughs> Got it. Bring that. <laughs> but yes, they sh you, you should be able to. Absolutely. I've done it with um, uh, bananas and broccoli and, you know, my own carrots or green beans and yeah, and peaches. I've frozen my own peaches. So it's the, the items that tend to have a little bit softer flesh. Yeah. Um, they they won't be exactly the same as they were when they were um, unfrozen. They'll they will have a little bit more mush to them, but they're still very delicious. All right. And the other, another question we have is um, um, someone who said they're not a fan of beans. They don't like the texture. Do they have, do you have ideas of how to process them for better texture or how to, how to get the benefits of beans with a, with a different ingredient? Hello hummus. Well, you can, <laughs> you know, like, because you can basically, if you, if you like the texture of hummus, which is basically very smooth, you can yeah. make hummus out of any kind of bean, black bean hummus, red bean hummus. So you just put it into a uh, blender with a little bit of olive oil and additional seasonings, depending on what you'd like. And that makes uh, a delicious hummus. But if you really don't like beans at all, I mean, I think it's, it's nice to keep trying them in different ways. Sometimes you can make them into a, um, you know, like a stew or a soup. Uh, a friend of mine has this amazing baked bean recipe where somebody thinks they might like baked beans because of the sweetness. And then if you try to incorporate a couple other beans in there, the sweetness carries over. And then all of a sudden you're eating, you know, pinto beans and black beans and other beans that you didn't think you liked, but they got all simmered in together with those other flavors. Um, so a lot of times that's ways of carrying it over. But if you really don't like beans, I, you know, I, I can't tell you exactly, except for there are so many out there that you might keep trying and you might find one that you like. Yeah. One of the ways that I sneak beans into for my family is when I make, I make, tur when I make uh, ground turkey tacos, I will put the refried beans with the ground meat together and the flavoring and no one knows any the wiser. Um, yep. They insist they hate refried beans. <laughs> right. um, they eat them they eat them every taco tuesday um. yep. and you can do that a lot you know people think about the veggie burgers or black bean burgers if it's if it's if it's less visible you it does the the consistency of the bean is so starchy it really will kind of smooth into anything and that's why it makes a great hummus too is it yep. just becomes smooth when you blend it and then the, the final question I see here is around, uh, you, you spoke to this, but I think it's a good reminder for people, which was around how long would the salad last in the fridge that you made? Mm -hmm. So up to seven days, I am, I'm a food safety instructor as well. <laughs> if you make it in your home and don't put it outside on the picnic table, if you put it out on the picnic table, the time is much shorter. Sometimes the, if you're not refrigerating it and being very diligent about it, then you're really looking at maybe just that day or maybe two days. But if you made it and you said, okay, you know, Sunday night's my prep day and this is when I'm going to make it and I'm going to whip up some egg salad or uh, other things that you're going to make, it will technically last seven days safely. Great. I'm also very uh, careful about that in my house too, uh, too much yeah. to everyone else's complaints. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it, it's different rules because, you know, if it's takeout, it is a little less just because it wasn't, you don't know when that, you know, you don't know everything about that kitchen. So when you know everything about your own kitchen, you can go seven days. Good to know. Um, well, thank you so much, Allison, for all these great tips for the great recipe. We have a lot of great feedback in the chat. Um, I We are going to have three other Brain Health Tuesdays in June for Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month. Uh, next Tuesday, we're going to be talking about um, preventing uh, brain injuries, which is one of the major risk factors for Alzheimer's and other dementia. We are going to be, the following week, we're going to talk about sleep hygiene, and then the final week, we're going to talk about exercise. Um, and I just added a link to the chat of where you can register for those programs. Uh, we also have a featured program, which is going to be this Thursday at 6. I am going to be having a conversation with Dr. Andrew Budson, who is a 
really a, a great uh, neurologist in the Boston area who does a lot of exciting research, and he'll be talking about normal aging and dementia, the latest treatments, um, and he'll also talk about brain health as well. So we would love to see you there. Um, and I will be sending a recording of this with the recipe to everyone who registered. Um, and if you have any questions you didn't get to today, please call our helpline at 800-272-3900. Thank you again, Allison. I look, I'm, I'm sure I'm not alone in saying I look forward to having the, to uh, trying this new recipe. I do too. That's what I'm having for lunch. All right. <laughs> have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Take care.